Hello, everyone. Welcome back to MDC Tidbits. I'm Henriette Dupke. I'm from MDC. And today, look at my background. No aunt either. I'm back in office because we have actually opened up the office again. Well, we will not be able to be all together, but uh, somehow we, uh, we are back in business. So today, I'm looking forward to my canteen lunch, uh, which will be served in small portions, but that will be brought on later. Uh, so I won't share my lunch with you today, but I'm gonna give you a, uh, bring out a toast for a wonderful tidbit today. Also to you, Thomas. Cheers. Well, um, we, we were also very happy to experience that uh, now we can gather 50 people for, for, for meetings and for events. So actually, uh, what's more important than talking about networking uh, now where this opportunity has opened up again? Actually, for those of you who are lucky and signed up for our summer business networking tomorrow, you can bring what you will get to know, uh, what you'll learn today, you can bring it into, into practice tomorrow where we are going to gather 50 people exactly at the rooftop terrace of uh, Weather News in Tubo Howe. So uh, let's get started, Thomas. Um, you are not only my colleague at MDC, but before uh, you used to be a consultant where you taught people about cultural understanding, networking skills and communication. So I can only say that I'm really, really excited to hear what you're gonna learn us today. Thomas, I'll pass over the picture to you. The floor is yours, welcome. Thank you very much, Henriette, and thank you for inviting me today to uh, tell you a little bit about more about uh, the power of persuasion uh, and why I think it's important to consider uh, the power of persuasion when you look uh, into your networking efforts. Um, see, we all uh, take decisions every day, uh, numerous decisions, many decisions, some small and uh, rather insignificant. Uh, other decisions are huge uh, and potentially life changing and also uh, a lot of decisions in between. So before you as an individual put other people in a situation where they have to take a decision whether they want to say yes or no to you, uh, I think it's important to consider the psychological aspects of what goes on in people's minds before they take a decision on whether they want to say yes or no. Because the sheer amount of decisions we take does that our brain often does this on autopilot, uh, meaning that we often take decisions without really considering what's behind the decision we take. So in order to increase our chance of a yes, uh, I think it's extremely important that we look on the uh, psychological factors on why we take decisions as we do. And luckily, we have a lot of uh, brilliant minds that uh, look into the psychology of this field, and especially Robert Cialdini, uh, he's a professor at uh, Arizona State University. They've made a huge study on the, uh, on the factors that come into play when you take decisions. And they have uh, identified the six most important factors on, uh, on decision-making and the decision-making process. And they have found that the six most important factors when you take decisions uh, one, reciprocity, i.e. you uh, are very likely to give something to someone uh, if you have already received something beforehand, i.e. something for something. Uh, in this study, they made a small little uh, uh, investigation where they, uh, when a waiter in a restaurant, he handed the check uh, to the, uh, to, to the um, customers, uh, he left a small little mint on the plate uh, when he presented the bill. Uh, that increased his, uh, added, his, uh, his average uh, tip by 3%. Uh, not a lot, uh, but still an increase. However, the interesting part here is that when, when the waiter, he left the mint, when he then left the table, came back to the couple or whoever sat there and said, you know what, I'll give you one extra mint because uh, it's been a pleasure serving you and um, you need extra thanks. That extra mint and the way he did it increased his average tip by 23%. Uh, the interesting point in this fact is that it's not the amount of what you're giving others, it's the way you do it and how you make them feel. And that's also why reciprocity is one of the most important things in networking, i.e. always be giving uh, instead of taking because it will come back to you. And it's, it's a psychological fact that once, you, once you've received something and you feel that it's outside what you expected, you are very likely to give back to that person or individual. 
The second factor is uh, consensus. Uh, we like to do what other people do. Uh, that makes us feel safe. And uh, if we do that, we feel that, well, it's been tested before. Other people have succeeded doing this. So the likelihood of me succeeding by doing the same is very big. Uh, the platform Trustpilot is a very good example. Uh, we've seen that other people have bought this product or used this service. Uh, they like it, they've succeeded. Uh, so we'll therefore very likely to do the same. Uh, likeability, I think that uh, goes without saying that we are very likely to say yes to people we like. Uh, simple fact. And studies actually show that we have a tendency to, uh, to, to find people that we like more intelligent and more capable than people we don't like, even if we don't have any uh, facts to, to build our, uh, our opinion on that, simply because we like them. Uh, also, habits. Uh, we are all creature of habits. Um, we like to do things the way we do it. Also, it makes us feel safe. We've tried it before. Uh, it worked, uh, or at least we've learned from our mistakes, and therefore we, we like doing it again. And that's also why if you want to obtain something or obtain a change or if you want to obtain a client uh, buying a different product than what he's used to, always do it in small steps. In the same study from uh, Arizona State University, uh, obviously done in the States, they asked people to put signs up in their front yards uh, advocating what, what they uh, voted. And I have to say in the US, it's not as uncommon as in Denmark to tell people what you vote. Uh, but most people refuse to put up a sign in their front yard. They said, no, that's, that's not for me. In a second group of people, uh, they came with the same request and they said, but in, instead of a sign, they said, you know what, would you like to put a small sticker in your front window just showing, uh, you know, and it's not a big change, a small sticker. And people said, yes, we don't mind. And after a week, they came back and they said, you know what, um, we, we found out that it actually works better if you put a bigger sign in your front yard instead of a small sticker, it works a lot better. And the uh, amount of people uh, all of a sudden agreeing to put this uh, big uh, sign in the front yard compared to the first group was four times bigger. We just go to show that if you want to increase, uh, sorry, obtain uh, something big, take it in small steps at the time because we are creatures of habits, a habit, and we don't like uh, doing things we're not used to. The fifth is need, uh, and that also goes without saying. If we need something, <laughs> we're likely to go out and try and pursue that. However, a need is very often interlinked with these four uh, because it's very seldom that you'll only have one choice. Uh, so again, your need when you try to uh, obtain whatever it is you need, product, service, job, whatever, uh, that will be your decision process will be affected by these four as well. And lastly, uh, authority. Also, again, it depends a little bit about the culture, but um, no matter where you are, we all have a tendency to follow authority if not blindly, at least uh, with a great deal of not thinking about it. Uh, and that goes uh, in any day in every life decisions. Uh, look at Corona uh, crisis as a good example. When we are told that we have to keep a meter apart or two meters apart, we do it. Uh, it's very seldom that we actually stand up and, and insist on the underlying medical facts and so forth. If authority or uh, tells us to do so, we'll do so. So these factors are uh, the most important factors in our decision-making process. Um, and the reason I think that's very uh, important to consider when we consider networking, um, I would like to, to uh, use a little more people that have seen my lectures before on networking, they've seen this before, the, uh, the uh, infamous or famous uh, network stairs. And the reason I use that is simply the way I, I find it the, um, the, the one and best uh, model to show the uh, fundamentals and psychological fundamentals between uh, in networking. See, fundamental networking is, is no rocket science. Uh, you meet people online or in real life. Uh, you get to know them. After a while, you get to like them, or if not like, uh, at least maybe understand them. Uh, then you start to trust people. And lastly, uh, you want to succeed together. And by succeed, I mean that you are willing to uh, give to people in your network up here without having a hidden agenda, without expecting anything back. Um, and this is, this is, as I said, no rocket science. Anyone in your network, whether it's a social network, private network, or it's a professional network, you've all gone through this there, maybe without considering or thinking about it, 
And the way up the stair can be anything from a long one-time meeting. I think we've all met people that we instantly felt a connection and we sort of maybe not know them sort of deep down, but we liked them. We very quickly trusted them and they got a part of our uh, network very quickly. Others take a longer time, but we've all gone through these steps uh, when we network. Uh, you cannot skip it. And why is this important? Because if you look at this and the factors that decide whether you want to say yes or no is actually completely interlinked to this. If you take reciprocity, you want to give, you want to succeed together. You take consensus, trust pilot. You want to have trust, likability. You like people in your network and habits. You know what you're getting into. So that means that the whole network process is actually represented in four of the most six important factors of how we make our decisions. So that just tells you how extremely important it is uh, to understand the power of your network. And that's also why modern leaders today acknowledge that a strong network in any employee is actually to a certain extent more important than your uh, capabilities uh, and your theoretical knowledge. If you have a very strong network, uh, that's extremely important because the likelihood of you being able to persuade people to say yes to you is extremely big. You have a majority of psychological factors that simply states that I am going to say yes to you. So why is this important? Uh, because most of you will probably sit at home and say, well, it makes sense. But when I think about it, um, it comes as no surprise. See. Studies also show that 90% of us network, if not directly wrong, then inefficiently. And if you think about it, when we network professionally compared to, but when, when we network um, socially, quite often, and sometimes even without thinking about it, we try to go from meet, let me take another color, directly to succeed. To come with a few examples, uh, how many of us have sent a job application to a company we don't know or to, and to an individual we don't know? How many of us in sales have tried to sell a product or service to people we don't know? Cold calling, canvas sales. And how many of us have tried to book a meeting or obtain uh, su success in another way without really knowing the stakeholders of the ones deciding whether or not they want to say yes or no to us? I think this, is go this goes on on a daily basis. Um, and I think we can all agree now that your chances of success, if you try to go from meet directly up to succeed, they're quite small because you have all these factors against you. People don't know you because they don't know you. They don't like you. They have no reason to trust you. And therefore they have no reason to want to give you something. So let me ask you a question. If you uh, send an application, what do you think is the most valuable? An extremely strong uh, application that is top notch, top of, the top of the line, or an average application that comes with extreme good references from the uh, decision makers network, i.e. people saying, you know what, this guy over here, a girl, you don't even have to read the application. He's top notch. Uh, I can vouch for him. Instantly, you tap into that network you have the trust, you have other people's liking them, you have the consensus that you have other people liking them, i.e. it's not as difficult or, or um, dangerous to trust that advice. You don't like them personally, but you have people you like that likes them. And as we are creatures of habits and consensus, the likelihood of you liking them as well will be very big. Another example, you're trying to book a meeting. The odds of you calling directly and say, listen, my name is Thomas Heckman, I'm doing consultancy, I'd like to... Uh, book a sales meeting to present you what I am uh, doing talks about. Uh, it's very, very easy for uh, the receiver of that call to say no. However, if I use my network um, and get somebody to vouch for me, the likelihood of a decision maker saying no to some, somebody close in the network we've just established, that's extremely unlikely that they'll say no, I'm not gonna invite Thomas in even though you tell me to. So the chance of me getting that meeting is extremely high. Then afterwards, of course, it's up to me to, to make that meeting a success, but that's a different story. And often then I hear, but, but Thomas, this whole networking stairs and, and so forth, it's, it's all good and fine, uh, but you know, I don't have time for um, 
for going, you know, through my whole client uh, database and making sure that all my clients like me or trust me or, you know, I have uh, what I sell. I sell to thousands of clients or I, I book thousands of meetings. But in today's world, studies also show that it's, it's very likely that you are interlinked with whoever you're looking for whatever company you are addressing, whatever person you are you are interacting with, especially within the own uh, area of expertise, i.e. if you're in shipping, uh, the, the person you're looking for is likely also in shipping. Uh, so your networks there is very interlinked. So if you do a little homework, maybe check LinkedIn, ask your friends in your close network already if they know that person, then it's very unlikely that you're not in the second link interlinked with that person. And therefore, you save yourself a lot of work by helping that person to say yes to you by using your network and making sure that you use a link, one already close to you in your network that wants to help you succeed and will gladly open his or her network, uh, network for them uh, to help you into uh, the person or service or whatever you're trying to obtain because you will instantly have somebody who wants to give to the person they know you have a consensus because they know the person already. They don't know if they like you, but they like the person that has uh, given you the advice. And they like that because we are creatures of habit. So um, that just goes to show, and it's a very, very short presentation on the power of network and why it's so important that we consider the, the psychological factors on the decision-making process. Because uh, most times, uh, if you take the number of decisions we take on a daily basis, we actually answer without thinking about it based on these psychological facts. So use them, use that knowledge to make sure that whenever you have uh, something you want to succeed with, whether it's a person, a service or whatever, use your network. If the person is not in your network already, use your network to find out who in your network can help you. And lastly, make sure to build your own network by always be giving. You'll have a huge network of people wanting to give you back. Yes, thank Thanks you very much. Thomas. Great, great. I love your uh, I love your presentation. So, um, Thomas, uh, you you would recommend people not only to network when they need to get a new job or to do it like on a regular basis. Or what, what's your opinion about that? I mean, the whole networking process is a is a constant uh, constant situation. I mean, you network on a daily basis all the time whenever you meet somebody whether you go grocery shopping or uh, in your in your workplace or whatever. And my point is always never underestimate uh, a person's network, even though you cannot see the link. Often I hear I hear many people say at networking arrangement, no, you know, I, I don't want to I don't want to spend my time to be rude with that person over there because uh, they're in finance and I'm in chartering. So it's not worth the time. But you have no idea that, net, that the person's network over there could be extremely valuable to you. So you have to be extremely both open and curious uh, when it comes to networking because you have no idea about this person's underlying network and i.e. how much that can open up uh, your chances of success. I completely agree with you, Thomas, but I'm also one of the hardcore networkers. So Indeed. this morning, this morning I, I came in uh, to, to the office a little bit later because I had to do the summer um, party or whatever you call it with my daughter's class so i i was just beside one of the fathers and and he is actually becoming one of our tidbit speakers because he was telling me about this new report that done and boom i was like okay so even if i wasn't i was actually in my spare time there it it became it became work because i, I got this person so so you 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 should never think that the uh, it's only now i'm working now i'm uh, in my private life you can always swap it around it's always yeah. always what i find is that i always find value whenever i go to something i will always come back home with something do you have the same feeling thomas exactly i mean some of the uh, most uh, extraordinary experiences in my life has come from network uh, where i least expected it uh, strangers giving me something uh, that that i didn't expect them to give me and 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 what and afterwards, if when I think about it, these people doing that to me up here, you know, I will bend the world if I need to to make sure to help them whenever they need something, and just goes to show the power of networking. So I also think that it's it's important that you allow yourself uh, to go networking, to go attending events, uh, and and allow time to like if I if I get an idea that uh, I can connect to people, I will I will use these five minutes to write an email. Hi Thomas. 
Hi, Tia. I think you two should uh, have um, a, a virtual presentation, have a call. I think you can use each other. So even if it's five minutes out of my day, use the time to to uh, to do introductions and 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 to help other people it's really worth the pain because these two people who then met each other through your uh, networking skills they will be uh, forever grateful to you and whenever you need them uh, their advice or their help another time they will be open minded to help you and it's good it's a very good point Henriette. and i also want to underline that i think both you and i are quite extrovert uh, and i hear many introvert people saying, you know what, networking is not for me. I don't like it. I feel uncomfortable at networking arrangements and uh, it, it, it just gives me the creeps. I don't like it. Networking is a lot more than standing in a network arrangement or talk to strangers uh, when you go grocery shopping. And it usually, it, I usually tend to find that uh, introvert, they have yet a, a smaller network maybe, but a stronger network. And it goes without saying that you cannot, you can only use, you know, the day only have 24 hours i.e. the smaller network you have, the less time you can use on the individuals in your in your uh, small network. So in no means the number of people in your network. I see many people celebrating their connections on LinkedIn. Now I have 5,000 connections. And I often think to myself, but what does that mean to you? How close a relationship do you have to these 5,000 people? It's very unlikely that you are up here with 5,000 people. So, so it's not a success criteria in itself to have a very, very strong network, but uh, sorry, a large network. But it's a, it's a strong network with the people you have in your network and acknowledge that and then use them. If you have extroverts in your network, use them to, to form an introduction or, or the likes. If you don't like it yourself, use your network in that way. It works both fantastically for, for both extroverts and introverts. And we both both types have strengths and weaknesses when it comes to networking. But the extrovert is not a better networker than the introvert. And we extroverts, we will be happy to help uh, the introverts. Just come to us and say, can you help me meeting someone? And we'll say, okay, who do you want to meet? And we will do our best. We love so it. This is also, can you give us some, some advice on, if I go to a, an event, how can I be sure, how can I make sure that I will meet the right people? Because I go to an event, there are 50 people. Uh, how, how can I prepare myself and how can I um, make sure that I don't waste my time? I think it's very individual what your preferences are. I mean, me personally, unless I have a very uh, clear goal on what I want to obtain and I have a few people that I for sure want to speak to, then as an extrovert, I always just go with the flow and see who I, whoever I, I end up with talking to because I know I like talking to people, so I'll just see what happens. However, if you're more introvert, uh, I would make a plan. If you are not comfortable uh, talking to strangers, I would set my targets low when it comes to habits. Don't expect too much change in one. Then just say I'm fine with maybe addressing one or two people that I haven't addressed before and talk to them, maybe get their business card. And even though I feel uncomfortable about it, then maybe writing them a follow up email or give them a phone call or whatever the day after and thereby starting the first step on your networking stairs here. Uh, and no matter how introvert you are, um, the more you climb the stairs, the more comfortable it gets. So if you are introvert, low, um, as Willi Sundar said, low girls, and then uh, take it small steps and uh, single out a few people that you would like in your network. That would be my advice. I also think sometimes it, it can be very interesting to ask people, hey, what can I help you? How can I help you? And then they'll say, "Is is there anything you're you're struggling with right now?" Yes, mm -hmm. and, and people like they, they really love it. And they first they like, nah, but then they say, "Yeah, actually, I I, I would like to understand how this works." Or um, I would like to uh, meet somebody from mass supply service uh, because uh, they could be a potential customer. And I say, "Okay, but I have this guy over here, and we'll try to connect up the people." It's a very good point, Henry. And by doing that, by asking open questions, how can I help you? What's your interest? You instantly tap in to get to know you. Then you find out who is that person, what are they looking for. Uh, and you and you're, instantly, you're instantly setting one step up there. They yeah. are getting a feeling of you give, willing, wanting to give them something, even you don't know them, and the likelihood of, of you um, in the future having a, uh, a, a um, connection where you would like to help each other is, is quite strong. I've never had anybody who say, get off. <laughs> what do you <laughs> from me people are re oh really you want to help me wow yes I, I take that one i have a question from our dear colleague tia 
Yes. And uh, she asked, what if one ends up in a company with a more conservative and dominating mindset? What does it take to receive a yes here? Well, I, I, it's a very good question because when you say uh, conservative, uh, to a certain extent, that's a psychological thing because we have these habits that we, we, we like to do uh, things that we're used to doing. So if you find out that you as a, a person or an individual and your, your sort of personal culture differs a lot from the group that you are wanting to obtain a yes from, then I would take it in small steps uh, because if that group identifies you as somebody that is very much outside their uh, comfort zone, then instantly their psychological uh, effect will be to say no to you. Uh, that's just how we are wired as people. So I would consider a uh, very, very small step to get to know these people. What are their preferences? What do they like? And is there any way I can help them? Uh, and if that doesn't need to be uh, professional uh, matters. Um, they could also be with, uh, with personal stuff um and, and and i would simply that that takes a little more time it's it's more difficult uh but get to know them take it in small steps and don't expect a yes uh, in the first meeting as they say uh eat the elephant in bites then <laughs> end up having eaten it all um i have another question about you know the physical events versus the 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 social media and virtual events do you have any recommendations or what what are the differences or can you give us some advice on how to act on especially now the virtual meetings and and the social media with, which will be more present i presume with the new uh, standards of um, gathering yeah uh, also an extremely good question i think we've all seen the benefit of virtual meetings in this uh, corona crisis and i'm quite sure that it will be incorporated in a degree that we'll never go back to what it was before we'll use it a lot more uh, and i think it's great uh, we can uh, obtain a lot more it's time efficient however we should never underestimate the power of meeting in real life uh, the virtual meeting uh, is good for sharing information uh, having a, a specific meeting with a specific agenda, but it is also extremely easy to come at exact given time at 12. See, this this uh, is, a, is a good example. People, they log on at exactly 12 and they log off uh, the minute this is um, this is done, i.e. there's no interaction between the listeners to, to this event. So um, they can they can join an, uh, an opinion or have an opinion of me uh, as a presenter or, or you, uh, but there's no interaction. Um, so it will often be based on predetermined opinions on how I speak or how I dress or how I look. And there's no dialogue. Uh, so it has its value, but I, you should never underestimate the value of, of the physical meat, uh, where some, there's a lot more um, psychological factors into play on how we interact socially and, and how, we, uh, how we connect with other people. So a fine mix. And uh, I think we all look forward to uh, the society opening up a lot more because it is, it is beneficial for our our networking. I also think that just as, as an advice that you can always ask an, um, an, an organizer if they can provide a participant list or if they don't want to send it to you, if they can read it up. So you can see, ah, oh, there are people from Mass Tankers, there are people from uh, Weather News, whatever. Uh, so, so you can kind of prepare what kind of sectors or companies are present at. That could be both at your, your physical or your virtual event. So on this are really, really great yeah. to, to... It's always good to prepare, yeah. but again, uh, make sure that you're not predetermined in who you think uh, are interesting and then who aren't, uh, yeah. because you never know. So uh, an open mindset and uh, curiosity in order to, to get to meet and know new people uh, is extremely important because uh, you might end up finding gold places you would never have considered being interesting. I totally agree. Thomas, I think we should do the next tidbit about how to stimulate your curiosity if you don't have it by natural as we do have, as we do have it, but uh, curiosity is uh, is fantastic. You you learn and you meet so many wonderful people by that. But Thomas, time um, time has come to an end. Yes. Um, uh, we are going to have a lunch. You are actually in 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 the in the neighbor office in our meeting room so you're also in the office so we are going to join uh, to join for a for a, a real irl real lunch uh in in a few minutes so i would like to to thank you 
so much for, for spending your time here with us. And if any of you want to network with Thomas, we will send out an email afterwards uh, where we will share his email and his LinkedIn profile. And do feel free to reach out for Thomas. He will love to meet all of you because he's curious to know who was attending today. And um, uh, with these words, I would just say thank you for listening along. Tomorrow we will have um, the, uh, the CEO of uh, PureTech and he will be talking about Scrubber. So now we are getting into the more technical part of the maritime business. Have you ever really understood what these Scrubbers are about? You'll have the chance to get to know it tomorrow. And then next week, uh, we will dive into the power of LinkedIn hashtags and so on. So that's a little bit also um, how to how to use it um, for for networking. And we will also have an expert in millennials, millennials. So how to attract the young people uh, to your company and and also how to treat your employees. So um, hope to see you uh, tomorrow or next week for tidbits. Thank you and uh, hope you enjoyed this lunch. Bye bye.